So, how to perform spinal anesthesia? We've got 10 simple steps to perform spinal anesthesia. Hey there, this is Pradop from Anesthesia Tech. Here we share more anesthesia and surgical related videos. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get regular notification. Coming to the topic, spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is a type of regional anesthesia that involves the injection of a local anesthetic medication into the spinal fluid. This temporarily numbs the lower part of the body, providing pain relief during surgical procedures. In spinal anesthesia, a fine needle is inserted to reach the subarachnoid space of the dural sac, where spinal fluid called CSF is present, then drugs are administered to numb the nerves. By blocking these nerves, the drug numbs the area and prevents the transmission of pain signals to the brain. Usually, spinal anesthesia is given by making a lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture is a procedure of passing a long, fine needle through an interspinous space in the lumbar region below the level of L2 to reach the subarachnoid space of the dural sac. This lumbar puncture can be performed in any interspinous space between L3 and L4 when the patient is kept right lateral or sitting position with the well-flexed spinal column. While doing a lumbar puncture, the needle passes through several structures and finally causes the return of cerebrospinal fluid. The structures include skin subcutaneous tissue, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligament flavum, epidural space, dura, arachnoid, subarachnoid D. You can easily remember these structures by the mnemonic SSSILEDAS. First, arrange all the required things. This includes personal protective equipment like appropriate size sterile gloves, surgical gown, spinal tray, and spinal needle. The size of the needle can vary according to the patient and procedure. Hyperbaric local anesthetic drug, gauze piece, and antiseptic solution. Position the patient. The patient should be placed in a right lateral or sitting position with well-flexed spinal column. This can be achieved by holding a pillow and bending forward. Why we have to do position the patient in this particular position? This is because these positions help to open up the spaces between the bones in the back so that the needle can easily pass through the structures. Now we'll get into the steps for spinal anesthesia. Scrub and glove up carefully. Check the equipment on the sterile trolley. Read the label of the drug carefully, especially the concentration and confirm whether it is a hyperbaric drug or not. Because in spinal anesthesia, we should use only hyperbaric drugs. If not, it can cause alterations in the level of anesthesia. Draw up the local anesthetic to be injected intrathecally into the 5 ml syringe from the ampule opened by the theater assistant. As I said before, we should position the patient in a sitting or lateral position. Identify the level of puncture by palpation of bony landmarks. Then clean the skin with an antiseptic solution. Drape the patient with sterile drapes. If needed, infiltrate skin and subcutaneous tissue with local anesthetic. Once all set, start inserting the needle through the skin and subcutaneous tissue at a 90 degree angle to the skin surface. Advance the needle until cerebrospinal fluid is returned and attach a syringe containing a local anesthetic. Once the site is confirmed, inject local anesthetic slowly over 60 seconds. After administering the medication, remove the spinal needle gently and wipe the area with an antiseptic solution. As soon as the subarachnoid injection is completed, the patient is brought back to the supine position very gently without jerking movements. Because any violent and jerky movements will cause turbulence, means unsteady movement in CSF and can alter the level of anesthesia.